Movie World Award winning Ethiopian movie producer, writer and director Maret Madefro from the Realness Institute now joins us on the program to speak about the activities of the Institute in developing African cinema in conjunction with Netflix. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, could you please tell us about the Realness Institute? What are you trying to do in the relationship with Netflix? Sure, the Realness Institute is a nonprofit organization whose mission is to unearth African stories, the wealth of African stories from an unapolog unapologetically African point of view. And um, the lab and partnership we have with Netflix is um, around episodic content creation. Um, and we will be, we, we've selected six writers um, that are going to be developing their stories um, over a period of a few months with story consultants, um, Tandeka and Selena, as well as two creative producers, Elias Ribeiro and myself, Marat Mandefro. I think Africa is the most creative continent on the planet. Um, and I think we are master storytellers and have long been. But oftentimes the industry has not valued our stories appropriately. So this is an effort to try and um, value the stories appropriately. And also make sure that the stories um, that are being circulated around the world are written by us. Interesting. Speaking about value, what would you say is the place for African cinema right now in the value chain of the global film industry? I think it, there's a huge place for it, right? It's a perspective. Um, you know, Africa, first of all, you know, 54 countries, so 54 perspectives. They're all very different, very diverse, you know, and I think a lot of times African cinema hasn't been rightly um, valued by the market and it hasn't really been able to be distributed. Even within the continent, one of my biggest pet peeves is it's very hard to see other African films if you live on the continent. Uh, for example, in Addis Ababa, you know, it's not easy to try and see some of the Senegalese movies, you know, so I think distribution has always been a bit of a problem. Uh, when it comes to the continent, it's often been left off of uh, distribution channels, you know, unless you live in South Africa um, and obviously some of the North African countries as well. So this is a huge challenge. I think there's a huge appetite for our stories. And so what we're trying to do with realness is make it um, easier, right? Reduce the barriers to distribution and make sure our stories really get out there. Um, obviously, local consumption is super important. You know, for example, in Nigeria, um, uh, you know, it's great what Nollywood has done. And I think there's a real role for that as well. This is not to say either or. I believe there are ands. But to date, I don't think there have been enough African stories written by us that have been circulated, distributed, and seen by the rest of the world, in addition to on the continent. And we want to help solve that challenge. Very enlightening. <laughs> Distribution has been a big challenge in Africa for a long time. And even the advent of streaming platforms still only cater to just a few because internet penetration and the cost of it in Africa is still not as robust as it is in other continents. So how best do you suppose this distribution challenges can be tackled? Of course. I mean, I think the broadcasters have a huge role to play here. You know, I'm talking about the public broadcasters, free to air channels, pay channels, you know, Mnet, DSTV, all these things have kind of had a bit of a monopoly, but there's room for other broadcasters to truly um, start commissioning stories and actually starting to pay. Uh, the makers for stories, because I think that's the other biggest difference, right? In a lot of countries like Ethiopia, you know, the broadcasters aren't paying enough, right? Um, it's not in the interest of the producers to actually license their content uh, and make and distribute it. So I think in particular in Africa, and we've seen this in Ethiopia, the penetration of TV is much wider than people realize, for example, right, with the channels. So I think there's a real role for broadcasters to step up and fill the void in addition to digital. So it's not just about internet. Well, for someone with so much exposure and experience um, in filmmaking, what would you say are the most important rules of screenwriting when it comes to making good movies? Rule number one, the golden rule, don't rush it. Uh, I think many people rush writing a screenplay. Um, and I think that 
it doesn't give you enough time to explore all the opportunities there are in that story. I think it's a huge problem, similar to what we said about distribution on the continent. I don't think there is really any money for development of stories in Africa, and that's a real problem. Anywhere else, you actually get um, resources to spend some time and think about your story. Um, and I don't think we have enough of those opportunities. So the first thing I tell all screenwriters is slow down, You know, take your time, make sure you know what you want to say before you start writing. So there are steps to how you do that. But I think that is actually the hardest part of any story is really getting to the heart of what it is you want to say. Oh, thank you for that lesson in filming. But, you know, I will ask you about Nollywood. You knew I was going to do that. <laughs> what are your thoughts about Nigerian films? Look, I don't know that I would say anything. I mean, Nigerian film industry is has been successful by my, you know, by my view. I mean, it's really one of the best examples we have of consuming our own content. I'm very jealous of Nigeria's film industry and Nollywood. I wish Ethiopia could, you know, produce at that level, to be honest, and consume it. I think we could consume it. So, I mean, I think my advice, whether it's Nigeria, Ethiopia, the US, wherever, is the same, you know? Uh, make sure you're saying something about the world, you know? Don't just make a film to make a film. You know what I mean? And take your time with it because I think it's a very powerful medium, whether it's the small screen TV or the large screen, it's a real opportunity to capture people's imaginations. And there's so many things we have to be saying about the world right now. And I really, really believe in the power of artists to reach people. And so it's a huge opportunity. Um, and I think it comes with a certain amount of responsibility. So don't take it lightly, take your time and make sure you're saying something that matters. Right, I was really impressed with Steve Gukas's film about um, the doctor uh, with the Ebola. Um, oh my God, I'm blanking on the name. Um, 93 Days, that is my top film. I was really impressed with that story. It's such a good example of everything that I'm talking about, right? Um, in terms of saying something, I mean, he's really talking about, you know, oftentimes when we tell stories about places, we only think about the bad things. Uh, but he, you know, he was really talking about what got averted basically, right? And trying to show the sacrifice, hope, and heroes of the of these frontline workers. And he did it as a narrative, which I think was a really smart decision. I think a lot of people would have, you know, done that as a documentary potentially. So I just loved that film. It was my favorite. Definitely, definitely. African movies are definitely taking over the world. Uh, thank you so much, Marit, for joining us on the program today. Thank you for staying tuned. It's now time for a quick break. Entertainment News and Channels Television will be right back.